I'm Kathy Cox, and I'm the, I work here at City University of Seattle, and I'm the Anactus advisor of this uh, amazing team. So uh, I want to tell you a little teeny bit about Anactus and do some thank yous. We're going to uh, do a short video after I say a few words, and then our president's doing a few words, and then our amazing presentation team is going to reprise our winning presentation. So just to, for a lot of people that may not know what Anactus is, it's a global organization, has 36 different countries involved uh, with uh, thousands of students. And uh, there's, uh, in the US, there's 444 uh, uh, schools that participate. And there's uh, 1,500 schools, I think, worldwide. And what they're really known for is holding competitions. And unlike a lot of competitions uh, where maybe it's just uh, an idea or they are actually judged on the outcomes. So we actually have to do our ideas. The other part that's so unique and so great, it's not just the outcomes on maybe a business outcome on whether something's successful, but it has to have a social good to them. So it helps empower others of those in need. It helps the environment. So it's, it's really, which you'll find out, a triple bottom line uh, situation in Anactus. And really, it's there to try and to give experiential learning uh, to the students to be able to apply their skills that they learn here and their, and here at City University and apply it to real life circumstances. So uh, we, uh, I, <clears throat> So we ended up uh, competing. We've been competing for, um, well, I, we've been competing for probably more than 12 years, 12, 12 yeah, 15 yeah. years. I came on board about seven years ago. We actually started with, um, we started barely being able to compete. The first round is to go into regionals and uh, you need to go to regionals to be able to get to nationals, and we didn't get to nationals, we didn't get to nationals. And then we got to nationals, and that was exciting, and so we were all excited about going to nationals. And then we would get in, in the first round to be able to, it's really tough to get into that first round, and so we try and get there, and try and get there, and didn't get there. And last year, we got into the semifinals. And this year, we got into finals. I want to give you a perspective on it. Um, I know there's a lot of, which I'm going to do thank yous for that in a second. I know there's a lot of families here that may not know about this, but I, Americans, you guys know about March Madness, right? Right? Yeah. I want to give you perspective of how important this is. Okay? So there are, and I'm going to get my stats out here so I make sure I got them right. There are 351 Division I basketball teams, college basketball teams, nationwide. That's it. There are 444 Enactus teams nationwide. Okay? When they get picked to go to March Madness, there are 64 teams that got to go to March Madness. There were 87 this year in our first round. So when they go, they actually, you know, when they go to the Sweet 16, that's what we go to the Sweet 16. Pretty important, that Sweet 16, right? So, yes. uh, yeah, really important in March Madness. Isn't it important that being that Sweet 16? Yeah. Yeah. Final four? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In perspective, I actually looked at it, and I looked at it. I got to research. Um, I researched, and it is very rare for an unseated team to get into that final three. And you, you hear about it, you know, instead you get the Dukes, you got the North Carolinas, you got the Villanovas and Kansas, and you know, you get those teams, the legacy teams. It's extremely rare. It's the same thing in Enactus. Enactus has been around for 40 years, it was site before that. It's been around for about 40 years. And there are teams that have been around for 40 years and that have been in that Final Four time and time and time again. And it's the same legacy teams over and over again. We are one of those rare Cinderella teams that made it through. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's 
It's so exciting. We beat the team to get the Final Four that won last year. Uh, you know, it was it was it was really quite thrilling. So you know, it takes um, not just this amazing presentation team, which you'll see in a minute, but it takes a lot of people to be able to put this together. And so I want to thank everybody that's here. It takes you families. I can't believe all the families that are here. It's so wonderful. You know, it takes <clears throat> our advisors, like Charlie here has been an advisor. It takes people that have been mentoring us, like Kelly on vocal coaching. And it takes, you know, it takes so many of us. And it really also takes all the past members. It's this didn't, that's why I told you the history. It takes them. So we have a, a number of alumni here that came here just for tonight. So I'm so happy the alumni are here with people that have been been with the NACTUS officers that are still involved. Uh, we have my, my family, friends are here, business associates, so it really takes uh, a team effort to be able to do this. So um, we, uh, and uh, no, I'll do the, should I do that after the video? Let me do the video and then I can do something else. So uh, you guys, I'm taking a huge risk here, I assume that, but we're going to get, so Chen, who's the best, the best. <laughs> he did the video presentation for our Canadian competition presentation. But in addition to that, um, he actually put together this two minute video to give a sense of what we experienced. Um, they didn't want to show me. So <laughs> I hope it's okay. He keeps saying all the time, it's, 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 so, yeah. so we're going to show the video, uh, and then I'll introduce Randy, so go ahead. <laughs> Uh, a sense of what it was like when you're in the final four 
other times you're just in a room about this side performing and all of a sudden you go up there and you have microphones, huge video. But I think one of the best things I um, heard about it is, is that Beer said to us that, you know, for all the time when we practice, we actually, you can remember this, Swati and Monica, and Frank, we look at the videos of the people that were in that final four and we all go, that's what we aspire to. And Beer said, oh my gosh, we're now one of those videos that people are going to look at. It's hard to. So it it's just was an incredible experience. And yes, we were jumping. So the, the, la the last thank you, and then I'm going to have Randy say a couple words before they give the presentation, is to, of course, City U and Act of Seattle. Uh, they have been so supportive, both financially, emotionally, uh, everything from scholarships to help pay for our way to get to these competitions, uh, the, the instructors that instruct these wonderful students, uh, all the advisors that help them. I mean, everybody here in City U helps. I mean, the library, there's Matt, see, he's out The library people, the, everybody is so supportive here. So um, we got fourth place medals, and it's for the entire team. The entire team happens to also be people that have been extra special. So Tom Perry already, our dean of school of management, has already got his medal. Randy, <laughs> come up here, our president, we need to get their fourth place medals. By the way, I got it. I got to say what Kurt said to me. He says, "I saw some people wearing medals. I really love <laughs> <laughs> I already played. I'm giving you one. And here's to Pam. Well, you know, I can't imagine uh, an easier act uh, following wine and food, and then Kathy and that amazing video. Um, there's no way that, uh, that I can capture uh, your attention as well as uh, those two prior events. But I want to try. I want to try because City University is a special place. And Actus is part of why City U is a special place. You know, our uh, scholar practitioners, our faculty, uh, they care about students. The, uh, the kind of dedication and uh, appreciation and love that you see from Kathy is what you would see from our faculty members for all the students who are here. We're also really lucky because we have a combination of uh, older students and international students who get to come together and demonstrate amazing projects in the classroom every quarter. And the amazing work that our Enactus team has done, and you'll get to see in a few minutes, is representative of some of that great international cooperation. You know, City University today gets to play, I think, a leadership role in bringing the world together. It's a confusing time. Very confusing for at least one person I can think of, but it's a confusing <laughs> But working together, particularly on business matters, particularly on finding win-win situations where we're all better off, that's how the world gets small. And that's what our Enactus team is doing. You know, I really like the analogy uh, Kathy uh, drew about uh, the NC2A basketball uh, uh, playoffs each March, March Madness. Um, We've been excited to talk about getting to the Sweet 16 and the Final Four. I've been lucky enough to meet two uh, coaches who made it to the Final Four. They're incredibly special people. They not only uh, are incredibly curious, incredibly creative, that they can respond in a moment to a shifting landscape. City University is lucky in a lot of ways, but having Kathy Cox to lead our Enactus group is uh, one of our more fortunate occurrences. She's right. Final four coaches, year after year, make it to the final four. 
And that's why City University has year after year made it to the final four. So I'm hoping that you'll uh, join me in a rousing round of applause for an incredible leader and coach, Kathy Cox. Yes. Yeah. acknowledge uh, the parents who are here now tonight, the families who are here. You've raised incredible people. It's humbling to see what a great job you did raising incredible young people who are going to take care of us after uh, <laughs> very soon for some of us. But, uh, you did a great job. You know, as a parent of uh, four kids myself, I know this is the most important thing that I do, is raising my children. And I hope that they're going to be good citizens. I hope they're going to be uh, smart and make the world a better place. I want to congratulate you on achieving that. We get a chance to see the incredible work you've done with these young people, and I want to salute you. Thank you for letting City University uh, spend some time with these incredible people. Thank you very much. It's time. You may now begin. We are social entrepreneurs. We know no barriers, no boundaries. We come from all corners of the world to deliver the triple bottom line. We are trained in the United States where the spirit of entrepreneurship is fostered and nurtured. With seven of our members, including myself, I've been awarded the PMD Pro Project Management Certificate this year. We apply our skills to innovate by conducting needs assessment, taking action, and enabling social, economic, and environmental progress. We will be telling you the stories of three of our enterprises that meet five of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. With one tax away, we are tackling the number one issue we face in Seattle, homelessness. With further arts, we are tackling the largest contributor to landfill congestion, food waste. With Green Energy Center, we are tackling the biggest threat to humankind, climate change. At Inaita City University of Seattle, we believe our diversity is our strength and our different cultures has enriched our commitment in valuing ethical practices, social contribution, and environmental impact. Let's start with the one takes away. For six years, our team has been taking on number one problem in Seattle by developing projects that empowers people experiencing homelessness through access to jobs. We work with a charity which hires people experiencing homelessness. Through interviews, we discovered the challenge in their dispatching process. Our solution was texting, but half of their workers did not have phones. Two years ago, we launched One Call Away, which registers people in need with the Federal Lifeline Phone Services, dispatching jobs to more than 1,100 people to earn a total of $3.2 million in wages. Now, One Call Away is running sustainably with a phone service partner. Every Wednesday, people in need can sign up for free phones, which connect them to their jobs. So what else could the phones be used for? Asked one of the judges at the competition last year. Our team conducted 48 interviews with our target audience, including people experiencing homelessness and social service agencies. We identified the need for job seekers in finding services and agencies to increase their outreach. You mentioned you're experiencing homelessness and need help. You can text, even if you don't have a smartphone or internet access. Now, you can try this with us by texting the word HELP to 833-933-8398 and one, choose one of the keywords such as jobs, shelter, or food. Then, text it. You will get an instant response of where you can get a job opportunity, free clothing, food, or shelter. We saw an opportunity to take our phone project to the next level and expand the one call away with one text away. Created 
context to when working with the ZipWips platform. Currently, we manage the portal where premium clients will pay $65 a month to subscribe our service. Reaching our target audience is a big challenge. We develop an incentive way to promote our business with Brisbane. 833-933, text, and got news coverage. And here are our results. One Text Away provides opportunity for the award-winning Tom Douglas restaurants to spread the word about its dishwasher openings. Two dishwashers have already been hired. After the regional competition, Walmart was impressed by One Text Away. Last week, Walmart signed up as our premium client to recruit for jobs. One Text Away reaches goodwill industry people about their jobs and job trainings. We launched this April with the initial test of 97 businesses and agencies. 900 messages were sent and $5,000 in communication costs were saved. We are helping people experiencing homelessness, get jobs and job training. Based on our first month of beta usage, we focused on the one text away for generated $4,400 in profit by this time next year with many more additional jobs. We are proud that our dedication to the Seattle community has empowered people to have access to jobs. And now we have a groundbreaking model that can be scalable nationwide. Let's move on with Fertilize. Last year, we launched our brand Fertilize with the tagline, Feeding Heart and Soil. According to the USDA, 133 billion pounds of food is wasted every year. Food waste is the major contributor to landfill congestion and also adds to environmental damage. We create the proven best organic food fertilizer to warm composting, which reduces the amount of food waste. We increase our carbon footprint while developing a business with the product in demand. Red wigglers are amazing composters. The worms eat the food waste and transform it into castings full of nutrients. Red wiggler worms, solid and liquid fertilizers, are our three product lines. We, we partnered with the Rainier School that teaches skills to develop mentally disabled adults and started a worm composting business. Fertilize generated $850 for the Rainier School. This year, we expanded our business collaborating with Operation Zaclanch that serves half a million meals to people in poverty. We are adopting a zero waste approach since Operation Zaclanch cooks meals from unused food from company cafeterias such as Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and Amazon. Then, every week, we recycle a ton of food waste from Operation Set Lunch to feed into our fertilized business. Fertilized products have been sold online and at events. In July, we will be at the two best farmers market in the U.S. and will be distributed at Archer Supply Hardware. Our team will be training impoverished people to staff market and empower them to run the business. We plan to reduce 30 tons of food waste and generated $5,600 for Operation Sack Lunch this summer. We expect that number to grow to $11,500 next year. Together, we are social entrepreneurs hoping to solve the food waste issue while creating a sustainable business. Let's talk about our next enterprise, Green Energy Center. Our international team also gives us the perspective to solve issues around the world. About three years ago, one of our team members from Gabon, Africa, alerted our team about a problem in his country. We found it affects us all. Climate change is not only a threat to the planet, but to our livelihoods. Citibank report forecast that the world will lose $44 trillion in GDP by 2060 due to declined resources and increased natural disasters. We discovered that black carbon is responsible for up to half of the cause of climate change and by reducing black carbon has an immediate impact in lowering the rise of global temperatures. 25% of black carbon is caused by cooking with open fires? Yes. The World Health Organization estimates that around 3 billion people worldwide still cook using open fire. Every year, 
4 million people die from illnesses caused by the smoke and the carbon monoxide. And many more suffer from birds and eye and lung diseases. We have a mission to save our lives and our planet by starting a clean cook stove business. We collaborated with stove designer Art Donnelly and Jico Power, a University of Washington startup. And we ended up to create a stove with two other important benefits, power and biochar. Biochar is a carbon-rich charcoal that is used as a soil additive. Biochar stores and removes carbon dioxide while improving soil fertility and crop yields. This makes our stove not only carbon neutral, but carbon negative. <clears throat> More than 1.2 billion people don't have easy access to power. Our stove converts heat for enough power to charge phone or LED light. Our green energy set stove is the only stove of its kind. Carbon monoxide free, clean, uses readily available wastes, uses 40% less fuel, Sturdy produces biochar and bar, and also it is safe to touch. A better life for all. We ended. We first tested our stove two years ago in a small village, Kula Gabon, with our team members' mother-in-law, Florence. In this village, 80% of the limited power comes from diesel generators, and all cook with three stone fires. We trained Florence to use and maintain our stove, then monitor the results. Florence said she can now read clear and that she makes a minimum of $30 a month from charging her neighbor's phones with the power her stove generates. I calculated that her two stoves eliminate 10 tons of CO2 emission every year. Our next step was to make our project scalable by manufacturing it at an affordable price. We work with the designer so that our stove can last at least three years and to make it reproducible. We launched a crowdfunding campaign, made 10 presentations and received grants in totaling $7,000. But we needed more than money, we needed help with producing the stove. We collaborated with the Ramesh Industrial Innovation Center, hosted by Lafarge Holcomb, the world's largest cement manufacturer. With their manufacturing expertise, we received fit to produce the stove, but the cost was still too high for us to offer to the African villagers at an affordable price. While we struggled trying to lower the cost, we brainstormed on the other models for the stove. With the hurricane disasters last fall in the news, we thought of scaling our project to another way. Disaster relief. The Category 5 hurricane that slammed Caribbean has left U.S. citizens in Puerto Rico desperate for help. Good for some, cooking meals still a challenge. Hurricane Maria left the island residents in the dark. Tackling big issues like disaster relief and climate change takes collaboration. We wanted to listen to the local needs and the Ignitus team at the University of Puerto Rico, Umagao, jumped in. Even as they struggle with their own campus devastation, they believe the stove would be a perfect addition to their community center project. Puerto Rico experienced the second worst blackout in the world. Just this month, there were more power outages, and they still have to deal with not having consistent power and cooking with heat. <clears throat> Using a grant from CBS Media, myself and two other team members went to Puerto Rico. After our training, community members can now use hurricane debris as a fuel for our stove to cook, to charge their phone or LED light, and produce biochar for their new community garden. They will save 585 tons of CO2 by eliminating open burnings of hurricane debris. 80% of food supply in Puerto Rico is important. Gardens can make their food supply more sustainable and more affordable. Biochar is particularly productive for enhancing tropical soil. The Puerto Rico Community Center leader testified that our stove is not only an ideal tool for past disaster relief, but also can be used for years to come to help those in need to reduce expenses. But that's not all the story. We still have more to share with you. We are still dedicated to put a big dent in the global carbon emission and directly impact the health of millions with clean cooking. 
At the annual International Cook Stove Conference, we learned about a clean cook stove store in Guatemala and realized we can reach our mission by pivoting our model. An active advisor and myself traveled to Guatemala to learn about their pilot business. Based on our research, we created a franchise business model that empowers local women to sell and repair all types of clean cook stove and sell renewable fuel. The Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stove Regional Director told us that 10 million households still cook using open fire in Central America, including half of the Guatemala families. The global entities have committed to build healthier communities and reduce deforestation. The National Appropriate Mitigation Actions Facility has committed to $15 million to reach a goal of selling 250,000 stoves. We met the policymaker and banking executives in the home of a retired ambassador to obtain a NAMA facility grant fund. Based on the positive response for our stove, we developed a new model to focus on production of renewable fuel from waste and to manufacture our stove in Guatemala. This fall, we will be launching our first franchise store, focusing on using waste pelleted fuel to earn ongoing revenue. We are proud to say that our businesses meet five of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Good health and well-being. Affordable and clean energy. Decent work and economic growth. Responsible consumption. Climate action. We bring perspectives on local and global challenges, tackle the largest problem faced by humankind, develop sustainable solutions, and implement sound business strategies. By doing this, we are taking an action on the triple bottom line. Through one text away, we are making a progress through uh, making a progress by developing a project that enhances a people experiencing homelessness and social service agencies. We are reducing food waste with a business, turning 30 tons of food waste into organic fertilizers. We save our partners $800, hurting them $850, with an expected $11,500 in revenue next year. We are tackling the largest social and economic issues, already eliminating 585 tons of carbon dioxide, generating thousands of watts of renewable power, and enabling a healthier lifestyle for Gabon villages and for the Rico disaster victims. We created, tested, learned, and pivoted Green Energy Center to transform it into a one-stop shop for smokeless stoves for even bigger results with the vision to change the life of millions. We are Enacta City University of Seattle. And, and we are social entrepreneurs.
view of Seattle and ACTUS team. And that is, we're all international students and we're the only team that we know of in all of ACTUS Global that is all international students. So I'm gonna just take a second and I want to have each one because it's so important to say your name and where you're from because you've got a really amazing idea here. But we can hear you. Yeah, so go. Namaste, my name is Anshu. I'm from Nepal. I'm Akava. I'm Tasha from Malaysia. Hi, I'm Rachi. I'm from India. Susdai, I'm Jalika from Cambodia. Xin Chao, I'm Jen and I'm from Vietnam. Good day, I'm Sophie from Australia. I'm Benadi, I'm Savali from the Gambia. Hi, I'm Akbar, I'm Ahmad from Indonesia. Namaste, I'm Shiva. Zdravstvite, I'm Anton from Russia. Oh, uh, Ukraine. <laughs> I'm Vikramal Singh from India. I'm Lee from Vietnam. Namaste, I'm Stena from India. Zembeno, I'm Mandy from Mongolia. I'm Chen from China. Xin Chao, I'm Kim, I'm from Vietnam. I'm Tweek, I'm from India as well. A lot of Indians here. Namaste, I'm Swati from India. I'm Monica from Bulgaria. Hi guys, I'm Justina from Philippines. Sastrakal, I'm Kanikam from Punjab, India. I'm Kara, I'm from China. Yeah. I want to, I know I've been thanking everyone, I want to thank you, okay, for you, to, for your participation in trying to make the world a better place and to help others, but there is something even more important, okay, because you guys show what it's like to be a team and show that diversity is your strength, as we say in the script. You don't fear diversity. You actually embrace it and you use it and you create amazing teamwork and friendships together. And I think that is a great message for us to take, especially during this time, to take to the world about, yes, it is possible that this kind of diversity can produce such great results for the world. So thank you. I just, want to, I just want to end this with something. So yes, it takes a team, and it takes an amazing team this year for um, to putting this together. And But there's a really extra special person that really has worked hard and she's actually done so much on all the social media promoting us. And so that's Sophie, our president. And she just posted something on Facebook. The, they, they, the grads, they all did a pre-graduation and that just, all these countries get together, so it's so amazing. And she did this post, and I want to read it to you because I think this is so important for all of us and for especially people here at City U to know what this means to them. So, and here we are, finding ourselves in an intersection of life where we refuse to view education as a mere product to, so, to students on grounds of higher earnings in the job market and would rather accept the reality of education as a social good that addresses solutions for modern society. We are Enacta City U graduates and we are future leaders who are ready to take on the next challenges in life. And we already have alums that are already doing that. So thank you. There it is.